the library! The inscrutable Eastern Empire known as Nippon is ruled by a reclusive semi-divine emperor, also known as the Divine Sun. But real power lies in the hands of the many feudal warlords, or Samurai. Knights resplendent in brightly colored armor made of lacquered wood that enforce a complex and rigid class system. These warrior nobles govern large domains and command retinues in which they frequently indulge in private wars among themselves. Nippon is an island realm and a notable sea power, and it sometimes happens that a samurai war fleet is dispersed by a typhoon, scattering the ships far and wide. Should an isolated war junk fetch up on a foreign shore, the samurai commander will gather his men and march straight for the nearest representative of authority to offer his service in return for food and shelter. Sometimes samurai lords deliberately embark their followers into war junks and set sail towards the rising sun in search of adventure. Typically, if the other feudal clans back home in Nippon are cramping their style. The samurai classes dominate Nipponese society. Their land is so vast and so often inhospitable, the samurai so strong and the emperor so weak, that central control has all but disappeared. Society is normally run by the samurai who exchange their protection for control over the towns and cities, along with taxes and the right to levy militias. As the samurai have grown in strength, so has each settlement's need for the samurai. Their training, devotion, and continual practice have turned them into awesome and specialized fighters. Nippon abounds with diverse orders of monks, whether martial or clerical. The orders select their members at a very early age, and the chosen ones devote their entire lives to philosophy, theology, and the martial arts. A lifetime of grueling study hones their bodies and minds to a very fine edge. The Nipponese are said to be intensely distrustful of outsiders. They only permit foreigners who travel in their lands rarely, and so little else is known about Nippon. Although, doubtless, if the rest of the world is anything to go by, it will be populated by its own unique and deadly monsters and perils. Like many Orientals, Nipponese worship a common god called the Orange Simka, whose monks wear orange robes and spend most of their time in contemplation. Vimto is the martial version of Simkism. The stone statues known as Temple Dogs can be found guarding temple entrances in the lands of Nippon. They resemble nothing so much as a cross between a giant Pekingese and a lion. In times of war, the power of the temple gods is channeled into these statues to animate them. It is a great honor to mount this divine animal indicating that the rider has found great favor with the gods. Some Nipponese worship Lord Tsien Sin, known in the Old World as Zench. The might of the island race of Nippon is considered a threat even in the great empire of Cathay, as it is a notable sea power with strong crack troops in the form of the samurai. As the warrior nobility of Nippon, the Samurai Martial Code leaves little room for failure, and there can be no honor in defeat. The Samurai are much concerned with their personal reputation as warriors, and always fight to the utmost of their ability. They have developed their skills to a level far above those of normal humans. Fatalism has reached such a peak in these warriors that some up to 10% in any battle regard it as a high honor to die and become kamikaze. These warriors 
are in a state where they prepare to go into battle as human bombs, carrying either a cask of black powder or bandoliers loaded with separate explosive charges. Kamikaze warriors hide in other regiments, lighting the fuses on their explosive packs and rushing to meet the enemy as soon as it gets close to them. A kamikaze not killed during a battle will slay himself, believing that his time has come and that to live on would be an affront to Simka. Even these warriors are outclassed by the various orders of warrior monks, known as the Vim Taoists. They do not need weapons, but fight with their bare hands. While they cannot wear armor or carry shields, their agility is such that they can dodge and parry blows with their limbs alone. Ninja assassins are an indispensable cohort of a samurai lord's retinue. Dark agents of death who prey upon the unwary and slay them without mercy. They remain disguised within regiments of ordinary troops until it is time for them to spring. Once a regiment is engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the assassin throws off his disguise, leaps out of the regiment, and may attack any important figures in the enemy regiment. They fight unarmed or with a wide variety of weapons, such as the Kusari Gamma, a sickle on a length of cord or light chain that can be thrown or used as a hand weapon, shuriken or throwing stars, and toronkoed grenades, which can be loaded with explosives, blinding flash powder, or confusing firecrackers to cause diversion. Nippodi's peasants are extremely reluctant to fight for their samurai overlords, however sometimes they have no choice. They form regiments of Ashigaru, Highly disciplined warriors that follow the samurai and obey them without question. They can be armed with hand weapons, spears, longbows, or akubuses. Nipponese armies know how to use black powder weapons, such as crude muzzle-loaded arquebusiers, simple firelock pistols, favoured by mounted samurai alongside bows and crossbows cannons, and very precise six to nine feet long war rockets filled with a mixture of fireworks that are designed to frighten, disorganize, and distract the survivors of a unit. While no samurai could lower himself to work so closely with the lower orders and operate fundamentally cowardly weapons, the profession of bombardier is regarded with great esteem amongst the lower military orders. Because of their geographical isolation, Nipponese armies can only employ ogre mercenaries and allied giants. Samurai lords are known to ride on war horses, temple dogs, and ki rin. Ki rin are creatures of wholly unnatural composition. Although appearing not unlike normal flesh and blood, they live amongst the devastating forces of lightning, storm, and thunder. Kirin are aerial creatures that ride the roaring winds and storm clouds, bellowing like thunder and screaming great cracks of lightning through the disturbed air. Kirin have horse-like bodies with long flowing manes upon which sparks of silver lightning crackle. In the center of the creature's forehead sprouts a long silver horn used to impale its foes. They are only ridden by the most powerful of Far Eastern heroes. And according to the sages of Cathay, the race of Kirin was born of the union of air and earth while the world was young. 